David Allen, I sent you an email. How's it going, buddy? Do you have anything to say about Ave? Yes. So, Stani, I think I always call him Stani, the genius, uh, that guy. And uh, I've talked to him before. I like where Ave is going. I like the whole decentralized and I actually hold, uh, I own and still hold Ave. I never sold it. I think it could be a big portion in the DeFi player, as you know, as we see like different DeFi projects just crash and burn. But uh, only time will tell. So if it's me, I'm going to actually start picking up more, more Ave because I think it's undervalued, but that's it. Nice glasses. Thanks. I wear these glasses because uh, sometimes my eyes get stressed out and they go a little cross. So I wear these so I don't get headaches and stuff like that. Uh, something different about your face. You shaved. Yes, I shaved. I look like it. The problem with the shaving is my head looks even bigger. So I don't know how that worked out. What's your thoughts on Pulse Chain? I don't know. I know it's the Richard Hart dealy. And, uh, I know you have to sacrifice your Ethereum. I know you get, you get Pulse Chain. That's all I know. Don't understand it. Probably won't invest into it unless I understand it. And that's it. Who? J Church on being this month. Follow me on Sweat. Sure. Awesome. And that's just it. Like, I got a lot of people following. So if you beat me, then send me a screenshot. And we'll go there. Uh, what do I think about Steppen? I don't like Steppen at all. So I know people love it, and th that's, that's for you. For me, like some people worked out pretty well. They got in earlier, they got in, and they, they, they picked the right NFT. I must just pick the worst NFT of all time because all I do is repair those damn shoes, and that's it. And then some people say, well, you didn't, you didn't level up the right way. You should have done more in the resilience and, and, and not picked on luck. And I didn't pick that much on luck. So I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to sell that NFT when I get around to it and then buy another one. But I got to tell you, Buying an NFT for $1,000, $2,000 and hopefully breaking even, hopefully, I just don't see that. Now, maybe when everything comes in where Stepan allows people to rent your shoes, I can see it. Right now, it's not there. That's why, like with Sweatcoin, it doesn't cost you anything to start up and you just do it. And right now, I think that is a hotter play than uh, Stepan. And of course, people will say, you're an idiot. True, sometimes. But I just, I just, don't, I just I don't like it. Uh, and if I have... Everybody's going to, nothing's perfect, right? So maybe I just did it wrong. I'm going to try again from scratch, go from there. But uh, that's why I'm not a big fan. All right. Crypto Rocker says, you should start doing portfolio reviews anyway. That's a good idea. Take it some of what we have going on in Opera Paints. So I used to do that all the time. We used to do it on Fridays. And then uh, I just got away from it because it's, it's tricky because you got to, you know, you, sometimes you have to dash some people's dreams. And crush their crush their souls and tell them that's not a. But again, like I'm just kidding. I just I can't give you much of any advice. I can just tell you, only tell you what I would do if that was my portfolio. But it is fun, and a lot of people. I must tell you, when we did portfolio reviews, the majority they were pretty smart reviews and and are pretty smart portfolios, and they would diversify adequately. And I I had a good time doing it, so I'll probably do it again. Oh, great question. So Sim says, "Do I know where to buy gold? Go see my brother in Las Vegas. That's all he buys." He has physical gold in his house. I told him to buy Bitcoin and he didn't. And in actuality, he did pretty good because I told him to buy in January. <laughs> and, and actually he did, he did better. But in the long run, we'll see. Uh, I buy gold in my iTrust Roth IRA account, which is, I think, a pretty good hedge against everything else that I have, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, and Cardano, and a bunch of other things that are in there already. So that's where I buy gold, but uh, that's it. Ah, uh, please can you summarize to us who's coming here, please? Bottom indicator, haven't been since March 2020. Probably not the bottom because no one can predict it. Uh, I talked about POAP or POAP, it's uh, free minting of NFTs for the minter and the mintee, uh, the people that actually create it and the people you give it to. And it's good for um, people who come to your events. And then lastly, uh, Sweatcoin is going to be the biggest token generation event uh, of all time in crypto. There you go. <laughs> I'm investing in rug pull coin. Oh, that's a lot of on DeFi. Uh, take your pick. Not a big fan. Uh, uh, uh. 
Rob, my birthday is May 29th. I'm the biggest fan of you and James. Best YouTubers in this crypto game you've both here. We try, David. We try. All right. We do try. Yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name. Priapism. If you don't know what priapism is, you can, you can Google it. Pretty good. And uh, it says, DCA, look, look 10 years ahead. That's right. You know what? That's it. I mean, if people could just have that, that outlook, you know what? And I'm glad you're here. All you guys are here because here's the thing. Let me back up for a second. Get my head out of the shot. Here's the thing. Like, for... In, in May 2021, April, May, I had to deal with a bunch of tourists in, the, in crypto, Cryptoville. And I tried to be a good guide and be very patient with them, but they were just annoying. And uh, now that you're, now that the tourists are gone and I got more of the level-headed people, people like yourselves who are, who are here and they get it and they take responsibility for their actions, it's a hell of a lot easier. I get a lot less views. I just do not care. It's just great to talk to people where it's like, oh, Rob, you didn't absolutely break me because you talked about Ethereum one day or something like that. So uh, if you guys have, if you're here now, you have a, a better outlook of, of, the, uh, of the cryptoverse and where things are going. And we know that it, it doesn't matter the day-to-day -day or the six-month frame or the, year to, or the year over year. It's really, if we take a look at, you know, one year, three year, five years, 10 years outlook. This is the biggest asymmetrical bet you can possibly get. There's a lot of losers out there, but you don't have to, it doesn't matter. You don't have to hit all the winners in a row. Just give me one and that's all I need. So that's what's up. So thanks, that's VCA. When Mullet saying, the, thanks man, hit the like and subscribe. Best moderator ever, or one of the best moderators. Oh, Seth, thanks for coming in. Yeah, we usually do it around this time. Sunday's a little bit different. And I got some drinking to do later, so it's kind of important that I get this done now. When Joe Rogan, that's not for me, man. That's for that's for people who are who are way, way up there in the space. Uh, pretty cool, man. Nah, not really cool. Never been cool. I just try to do my best. Utility is king. Exactly right. What's this say? Oh, it's pretty smart. Wesley says, if your time horizon is five to 10 years, you'll be very happy. We just did this. This we, I've been telling us like the last three days now. Uh, uh, Swish, Swish, Swish. Swiss uh, fund manager. I forgot the name. They are a half a trillion dollar asset under management company. And they have been talking about they're going to just get into cryptocurrency now. And they said that our outlook is 10 years. And we know that if we get in now, this is the time to do it. And I'm like, yes, exactly. And, uh, and we, you're, you're, you're going to see other people get in now. And it's going to be like a quiet type of thing. And I really make a big deal about it. But they're going to say, well, we're, we're dabbling in crypto. Of course you are. It's 1.3 trillion market cap. Be stupid to get into 3 trillion. Although in a couple of years, three trillion, I don't think will look like much of all. So yeah. Uh, how was Italy? Italy is awesome. I wasn't a fan of Venice. Hold on, let me say that again. I wasn't a fan of Venice food. There we go. A lot of seafood. I'm not a big seafood guy. So that was the thing. But I mean, oh, and I'll, I, I, I don't want to ruffle any feathers, but I wasn't impressed with the, with the food in Italy. And the reason why I wasn't impressed with the food in Italy is because I went to all the wrong restaurants, which is all the tourist traps. So when I go next time, I'm going to actually ask for reviews before I stupidly go to different places. So, yeah. Do you like Bucky's? So if you're talking about the gas station, yes, it's the best thing of all time. They're all the way through the Midwest and Texas. It's awesome. If you're traveling, which I will be traveling from El Paso to Austin for that consensus in my sweet Dodge Grand Caravan minivan, because I'm a baller, I'll probably be stopping at Bucky's. So I'll see you there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, ooh, ooh. Great question. Cosmos, Ada, or Dot? Who was the best tech? I'm going to give you a lame answer, and I'm going to give you a good answer. Lame answer is I don't really care, and I invest in all three. The good answer is that this. 
Cosmos, first of all, uh, Luna wasn't their own, was built on Cosmos and it worked out pretty well. Crypto.com, their crow coin is built on Cosmos. Cosmos is great for interoperability and I think will do fantastic. Cardano, I'm a big fan of, which I think we all know. I also got a, a Cardano stake pool. And the longer that we're into it, the longer that I'm into crypto, the more that I see that these projects that, are, that take things slow and really go a little like a snail's pace sometimes, and some that people might say is a boomer coin, which is Bitcoin, are the, are the best bets in the long run. I got to tell you, I, I put this out on Twitter and I said, you know, in April 2021, I kept getting a bunch of Bitcoins, a boomer coin. It's slow and it'll be flipped by name your S coin and it's going to be gone in a year, whatever. And I get a bunch of that. I don't get that anymore. So everybody got rug pulled. Sorry, but that's just how it is. So Ada, I can see. And Polkadot, I mean, Dr. Gavin Wood, he was a part of that, like I, like I call the Ethereum Mafia, which were the people that actually built Ethereum, Vitalik and Charles and, and Gavin. Uh, you can't bet against Polkadot. I think it'll be pretty big. The thing is, is that it's great tech. The question is, how does it get out there? And how does it get to make this, these huge communities? And how does it actually get to the next level? That's why I'm always talking. Let me show you. That's why I'm always talking about this. And I'm going to keep talking about this. Community utility team and tokenomics. Community utility team tokenomics. If you have a built-in community like we talked about with the, with the DGEN plays, the Gensos, the Everdomes, the Fame, and now Sweatcoin, it's the easiest thing of all time. So why wouldn't I do that? Ah, I got the wrong one. Sorry. Share my screen. This one, sorry, <laughs> showing you pictures of my wife. Uh, again, so ever done with fame. So again, the community is what makes it go. And if without the community, it's, it's not gonna happen unless it is just some of the most fantastic thing of all time. But the community makes things strong. The community pushes it in there and the community gets it in the public consciousness to where it actually blows up. That's what I'm going for from now on. With exceptions, exceptions every rule. All right. Ah, we got here. Woo. That's right, man. Veres in numeros. Strength in numbers. Good enough. Uh, where is this? Just by, just by ETH. Yeah. I got to tell you, between us, just me and you and the other couple thousand people that are here, I think people make investing way more difficult than it has to be because if it's difficult for you it means you have to rely on them to teach you how to do something it's to me it's super simple uh it's just find a project that has a good community does real utility has been around for a long time is battle tested and uh you believe in and just the best in that and then go from there and just dollar cost average and make it simple i don't know it's like I'm taking crazy pills or something. <laughs> I show pics of my life, but everyone's already seen on OnlyFans. You lucky, lucky devil. Sudhindra, ready, nailed it. Dan, do you have ICP or near in your pro portfolio? I have near. Uh, insane clown posse? Just kidding. Uh, Internet computer protocol? I do not. I think I did buy it, but I did sell it at a loss. I think it's ahead of its time. Like Tesla, eh? that's right. Algo is another one. Algo is in my portfolio. James Dean Metaverse, big plays coming up. Um, I bought a lot of land and a lot of different metaverses. And I like the land play. I know it doesn't make sense to some, to some of you, because you're like, that makes no sense. I get it, right? But I've done pretty well in the investments in physical land. And I see things going into the digital world, so why not have digital land? It won't make sense now. I think it'll make sense later. Just like trying to explain uh, the internet to kids back in the, the 80s. Like, that doesn't make any sense. I have a Dewey Decimal System. I don't need to find a book. I don't know, man. Stay far from... <laughs> it's hilarious. Stay far from near, Sim. Oh, there is one thing I need to talk to you about, about Sweatcoin, which is thanks, Sim, for bringing this up. Let me share this. Where did it go? Son of a gun. There is something that concerns me. And I thought it was a concern, but I thought this could actually be 
uh, an asset. So if we're on the sweat economy, their partners are Spartan, OKX, Blockchain, Electric Capital, Jump, okay, GSR, Jorn Wagner, Near Foundation. So it's built on Near. Sweatcoin is going to be built on Near. Transactions per second are very fast, very stable so far. We'll see if it can hold up to the scrutiny. But if you've got uh, 75 million plus people coming in, I guarantee these guys stress tested Near. We'll see. Sandeep Newell and Do Kwan. So someone brought this to my attention that doesn't this concern you that Do Kwan is, an, is a partner or an advisor? First of all, it's on the website. So it is a little concerning. They haven't taken it down yet. The second is maybe they don't want to take it down. Maybe the person to learn from mistakes are the people that made huge mistakes, right? No one wants to take sex advice from a virgin. So maybe in all honesty, they're like, Do Kwan, you know, Advisor, sure. I mean, you still have technical knowledge. You still know how to build these things. So what can we learn from you? I think actually it might be a smart move. All right. Uh, right. Where are we? Yeah, see? Osa, I've been in a sweat coin for two years now. Yeah. And I think that's it. <laughs> You'll cripple your eyes out, kid. Uh Zoolander, baby. All right, that's it. No, well, no, we got a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. I like to go. I like to answer the questions as much as I can. <laughs> like marriage counseling from a priest. I've never heard that before. That does make sense. Uh, Rob, I'd like your thoughts on buying blue chip NFTs. Apes, and mutants. It's not my realm, man. Um, I'll tell you what I know, and I'll tell you what I think I know, and I'll tell you what I don't know. So to get into these plays, it might be a great opportunity, because I know that these, I, I'm 99% sure these are all down with the rest of the market. And it might be something to do. Um, but some people don't understand the whole process of NFTs and what makes them actually valuable. And I think it's just, again, it's just part of it being in the community. If you know somebody or somebody has, I don't know, 100,000 plus dollars to, to blow on a picture and, uh, and you're in that inner circle, to me it always kind of felt like, like the, the country club in like the 40s and 50s where you get all these rich people together and they're like, hey, I got this great deal. Or hey, we're building this, this new structure or whatever else. And you can just talk to them because you're all rich and the rich just get richer. So like it's the same type of thing with in these communities, like, oh, you, you blew a hundred thousand bucks on a mutant ape. Uh, well, what else, you know, eh, that's how I see it, but whatever. Uh, oh, Jerry, Jerry says, what do you think about the new Luna plan? And this was someone talked, said about, Hey, it's already up 40% and the numbers, are the numbers. And I know that they're not going to use a, an algorithmically backed, Stable coin, they're going to actually back that by, I believe, correct me in the comments, USDC and Tether. And that'll be the stable coin. And there's going to, they're going to try to compensate some of their people who lost a lot of money. I think that part's great. But unfortunately, as I've read different things, do not sue me. This is just the things that I read that a lot of some, a good amount of VCs got bailed out first. That's just what I've read. And that could be totally incorrect because I don't know. I am going to not touch that with a 10-foot pole and uh, because the, when trust is gone, it's gone, right? So I just wouldn't get into it because of trust, right? We've got a lot of, uh, there's so many options out there for you for crypto. So why not just get into something that's uh, been around for quite some time, has built a great community and has uh, delivered to the best of their abilities. Go from there. All right. Ah. Thank you. So Rob, is now a good time to buy gold? This is not the question specifically for me. I just buy it. I Because on my Roth IRA, I max out at seven, I think it's 7,000, $6,000 or $7,000 per year, right? So I buy like 5% of gold in my Roth IRA. And then that's it. So I'm just done for the year anyhow. So uh, for me, as far as gold, there's a, 
there's a guy, Rob, at uh, goldsilverpros.com. He's got a YouTube channel. Check him out. He's really great on gold. And of course, uh, Michael Maloney. And uh, that's who I trust. All the rest of the gold bugs, I don't really know who they are. So, but that's not my, that's not my wheelhouse. I'm sorry. Crypto Lover says, hey, Rob, nice to see you. How much conviction do you have in Robert Grin, Dome and Hero Projects? I will tell you this. The, the reason that I got into Everdome was because of Robert Grimm for Dome and Hero. And I think I, can, I, I think I can show you this. If I can't, just keep it between us. Let's see here. Look up something. No, it's not it. Hold on real quick. I'm going to look up something and uh, show you an example of Everdome. Is this it? No. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's not it. One second. Hold with me. Staking snakes. Jesus, cry me Christmas. How many stupid tweets these guys have? Hold on. Fame. fame, fame. Ah. No, that's not it. Well, anyhow, I'll talk to you a little bit. So what I like about uh, Robert Grin's platform is uh, for Dome is the ability to actually do these uh, 3D lifelike scans and put them into the uh, cryptoverse or the metaverse. And the reason, the reason why, because I didn't realize just how expensive that is to actually do, it takes like tens of, like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to do that, right? But if you can scan something digitally and put it in and not have to have hire a ton of developers to do it, it takes a bunch of time. So I think it's going to be a pretty good play in the future as far as uh, with that. Finally, I found it. Jesus. Look at this. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Jeez. This is a game for fame that they used with the Everdome tech or the Dome technology. And this is going to be a play to earn game. So when people talk about graphics and they really want to see something a little bit better than, than the blockiness of like, say, Sandbox, here you go. So I like to see this. I love to actually love to play this game. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I can see them doing some pretty big things. That's just my two cents. All right, finally found that stupid thing. Right, you saying about Chainlink? I own a bunch of it. I don't know if I'd buy it. It's got some problems with tokenomics and uh, amount that get, actually gets dumped on. Question that I have, question for everybody, I'm not 100% sure, but I think there's a bunch of, uh, the tokenomics themselves is a bunch that are with the, um, the organization that is Chainlink. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Yeah, I don't want to hear about that anymore either. <laughs> Robert Gruner's a fraud. Everybody's, isn't everybody a fraud at some point, it seems like? That's a fraud. That's a fraud. That's a fraud. And then, uh, have you? No. Darth Mike says, I need to show gameplay to look like a pre-rendered cutscene. Yeah, I suppose so. I'll tell you right now, it's way better than uh, any of the blockiness that's out there. Although blockiness works okay for Minecraft, so whatever. And then yes, cornucopias will be huge on Cardano. I have to agree with you there. Uh, that's it, I think. Okay, so that's it. Coming up on one hour. So look, everybody, thanks for sticking with me on a Sunday. Good times, right? Like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Christopher Odell gets it in at the last minute. Do you think, damn it. Do you think Voyager will face the same issues as BlockFi and Celsius? 
The difference is between BlockFi and Celsius is Voyager doesn't, this is my personal opinion. They're not offering loans. And I had Steve on the show three weeks ago. And one of the big things that I can see is I believe BlockFi did loans. I know Celsius does loans. I have a loan out with them. So the question then is why did they get the cease and desist and Voyager didn't? Steve look for that video. It was like three weeks ago. Steve said, look, we still have, we still ask for collateral and we still rehypothecate. And if they still rehypothecate and Alex Mashinsky was on the show and he says, the problem was rehypothecation. Then the question is, what's the difference between you and them? Cause they're still going. Don't know. Anyhow, maybe the loans things. That's it for today. So thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.